Hey everybody, I am back with another video. Today we're looking at parallax camera mapping. This is a really cool effect for uh, bringing some depth into your 2D games. Uh, let's take a quick look at the effects that you get from it. Alright, so this is just the uh, first zone in my game Sweet Pea. And as you can see, the things in the foreground are moving by quicker than the things in the midground and the background range. The things in the background range are moving by even slower than the things in the midground range. Uh, and this creates a sense of depth. So, uh, this setup essentially just has our camera movement uh, also directly translate into the movement of our environment. So it moves our environment based on a speed coefficient that will essentially simulate depth or simulate what happens uh, kind of like whenever if you've ever driven through uh, past some woods or uh, a mountainscape or anything like that you'll see that things very close to the vehicle while you're moving fast are going by very quickly and things uh, further off in the distance go by much slower and that is what this effect gives you so we're going to start out with the hard part first, and that's going to be scripting. Thankfully, I'm going to make it really easy for you. Uh, this is the script that we're working with here. Now, you can just pause and copy this directly, like the text, if you like. Uh, I'm also going to take this text and paste it directly into a pinned comment, so it'll be nice and easy for you to get. You'll be able to just snatch it up. So that's what we're going to do is act like we just snatched it up off of the pinned comment. So I'm going to hit Control A to select everything, Control C to copy, and then we'll just close that out. Just so we're covering everything, we're going to right click down here in our assets folder, go up to create and select C sharp script. Then you can name it whatever you want, but it's important to remember what you do name it. I'm just going to name this one P-A-R for Parallax. Hit Enter, and then we're going to open that up. All right, we start out here with a blank script. All I'm going to do is hit Control a to select everything, hit Delete to delete everything, and then hit Control v to bring everything back in. Now, the only thing that we need to change right here is our public class. Just need to make sure that that matches the name, the file name of your script that you created. So for me, that's going to be P-A-R. And that should pretty much cover that. We're going to make sure we save it. So file, save, par. And we're going to exit out of that. And with our script selected here, you see we have this nice camera transform function. That's going to come in handy. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is set up our layers. So I already have mine set up, but what you're going to want to do, obviously you have some sort of environment going on. Uh, if you don't, then you're a little ahead of yourself, and I'd say throw an environment together and then start working on adding the depth in. But what we're going to do is go up and hit game object and go to create empty and then you can name that something like background foreground I'm just gonna call this back setting All right, close enough there we go and you're just gonna take your newly created script drag it and drop it right on there you then have two fields so we have a camera and a speed coefficient so camera you're just gonna use your main camera from the scene whatever you're using to film with there we go grab it drag it drop it right in there that's just gonna say that that camera is the camera the script is tracking and then moving our scripted object with and this is actually just a placeholder it's gonna hold our other objects then you're going to change your speed coefficient. So, if, as a rule, if you want something closer, if you want it to feel closer to the camera, it's going to have a negative coefficient. And if you want it to be further away in the background, it's going to have a positive coefficient. Uh, you want these to be small numbers. 
uh, I think like 0 0.1 is probably good for um, sort of background stuff. And what we'll do is we'll just, as a test, take something that does not have this. So this branch right here. Make sure that's what we have selected. All right. We're just going to take that. And we're going to drag it right down here and drop it on our newly created object. Back setting. There we are. Now, if we select back setting, oh, it didn't actually parent. Make sure that it parents. Drop it on. There we go. <laughs> You should, it should create like a new little sub object right there. You want to make sure that happens, otherwise it's not parenting properly. I don't know why Unity's being finicky with me today. Now, whenever I move that, it's going to move our branch, right? But with this script enabled, whenever the camera moves, it will also move. However, you're not seeing that now because it only acts per frame. So it's in on the update, it's in runtime. So what we can do is we have our camera selected here. I'm just gonna turn off our little follow player script. Should be up at the top somewhere. There it is. We're gonna hit play. switch back over to our scene view and you see our branch here and we have our camera selected not our back setting object and you see whenever I move the camera our branch moves as well and as you can see for the rest of the environment it's all set up this way to where when the camera moves these different layers of objects move with the camera. So with what we just set up, there's no reason to do it on that branch, but it's just a test. But with what we just set up, that would be a foreground, I'm sorry, a background object, back setting, right? So all you would do is take anything that you wanted to have that effect and drag it and drop it right on top of this. And as long as the back setting or our object that we created with our new parallax script on it is parenting those objects, they will be affected by it. And then if you wanted to do the same thing, but background objects, you would just create a new empty object, name it background or something like that. And then your coefficient would be a negative coefficient. So back to our back setting, we have 0 0.1. We can have negative 0 0.2. And then again, we'll hit play. And make sure we have our camera selected. Main camera, there we are. Now, whenever we move that around, it's going to have a negative coefficient like it is in the foreground. And you can do that with multiple layers. Uh, I think I have three or four layers. Yeah, I, I believe I have two background layers set up here and two foreground layers. Oh, I didn't reactivate my camera follow script. There we go. So with two background layers and two foreground layers, you can very clearly see that this right here is our midground, where we have our background items, which are reacting differently, like the movement is different, um, as it should be, as well as the foreground items, which in this particular shot, we don't have any good foreground items, but like I said, there's some nice trees over here. But you can see as we sort of wrap around, uh, our midground is exposing or unoccluding more of our background. And this is an effect that you just would not get without this uh, technique. And it's crazy because it doesn't look like 
it doesn't seem like it would make that much of a difference, but whenever you actually play through a level with and without it, it makes all the difference in the world as far as um, the sense of depth and atmosphere. So, if you have any questions, please let me know. If this was helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm a tiny channel, and I need all the help I can get. I will be back with more as soon as I can. Take it easy, guys.